Welcome children. In this video, I will be dealing with nucleic acid, one of the important biomolecules in the chapter 10 dealing with biomolecules. Nucleic acid, the basic two types of nucleic acids are DNA and RNA. DNA stands for deoxyribo nucleic acid whereas RNA stands for ribo nucleic acid. The function of nucleic acid is to serve as the genetic material but majority of the organism has DNA as a genetic material. Only very few organisms have RNA as a genetic material. We know which are the organisms, certain viruses and those viruses which has RNA as a genetic material are called the retroviruses. So besides being a genetic material, usually RNA serves as a catalyst, as an adapter molecule, as well as as a messenger. So these are the usual functions of RNA as a catalyst, adapter molecule or messenger. But only in few organisms it serves as a genetic material which is involved in inheritance. Now we can see the basic difference between DNA and RNA. The first and foremost difference is with respect to the number of strands. DNA has double strands, two strands whereas RNA has a single strand. You can see in the picture this is the DNA with two strands and this is an RNA with a single strand. The second difference is with respect to the nitrogenous bases. In DNA the nitrogenous bases are adenine, thymine, guanine and cytosine. See adenine. thymine, guanine and cytosine whereas in RNA the bases are adenine, uracil, guanine and cytosine. So we can see the difference between DNA and RNA is instead of thymine in RNA it is uracil. So Quickly saying about the bases, in DNA the bases are adenine, thymine, guanine and cytosine whereas in RNA it is adenine, uracil, guanine and cytosine. Third difference is with respect to the sugar. In DNA the sugar present is the deoxyribose sugar whereas in RNA the sugar is the ribose sugar. Now here warrants a diagram, the chemical structure of sugar. And I am drawing a common diagram for both because there is just a difference of a group that is attached. So the basic structure is the same for both. So this is the way you have to draw the diagram. Here we have an oxygen atom, here carbon 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Once again I indicate the, with numbers, first carbon, second carbon, third carbon, fourth carbon and this is the fifth carbon. Now I am going to attach or link or bind the hydroxyl group. Remember for DNA hydroxyl group is connected to the first, third and fifth carbon atoms whereas in the ribose sugar of RNA the hydroxyl group is connected to one, two, three and fifth carbon atoms so excluding fourth carbon atom. So I am going to draw the ribose sugar of DNA that is the deoxyribose sugar so at 1, at 3 and at 5. So 
so what is this representing this is representing a deoxy ribose sugar deoxy ribose sugar now i am going to make this deoxy ribose sugar into a ribose sugar there's an additional hydroxyl group at the second carbon now it has become a ribose sugar so you got the difference between the deoxy ribose sugar of dna and the ribose sugar of rna once again you have to draw the structure i'm drawing over this it should be like this way like a triangle and then you have this like this then here you have to indicate oxygen atom then first carbon second carbon third carbon fourth carbon fifth carbon then very important is the placing of the hydroxyl group if it is deoxy ribose sugar it is at the odd numbers 1 3 and 5 but if it is a ribose sugar of rna an additional hydroxyl group which is at 2 also and because of this additional hydroxyl group connected at 2 it makes rna very reactive one reason why rna is very reactive is because of the extra hydroxyl group attached to the second carbon of the ribose sugar or in, in terms of dna dna is very opposite of react is very stable the reason because it lacks the hydroxyl group at the second carbon compound at the second carbon atom clear so this is the structure chemical structure of the deoxy ribose sugar and ribose sugar so remember this hydroxyl group in deoxy ribose sugar is attached to the first third and fifth carbon whereas in ribose sugar the hydroxyl group is connected to linked to the first carbon atom second carbon atom third carbon atom and fifth carbon so all the carbon atoms except fourth is connected to the hydroxyl group and definitely you are like science students you can satisfy the tetravalency of carbon so here you have carbon here one is over two is over three so four with one hydrogen this carbon how you are satisfying here one bond satisfied second bond satisfied third bond so the fourth bond with hydrogen here 1 2 3 so with hydrogen here 1 2 3 so one hydrogen here 1 2 and two hydrogens so that should be satisfied with hydrogen bonds that you can do it automatically fill it with hydrogen single hydrogen or double hydrogen and the final difference between dna dna and rna is what we said now that is dna is very stable whereas rna is unstable or very reactive and are the reasons to support why dna is stable is because of all the other features it is double stranded that's why it is stable then the basis t instead of u makes it very stable and the third reason is the deoxy ribose sugar lacks the hydroxyl group at the second carbon uh, atom so that confers stability so the fourth feature is very stable dna is very stable and the reason of the stability is all the other three features how you will say the other three features that is dna is very stable because it is double stranded then it is stable because of t thymin makes it very stable and the sugar it has is deoxy ribose sugar which lacks hydroxyl group at 2 that's why dna is very stable and usually serves as a genetic material because of the stability now talk about rna why it is reactive or unstable one reason it is single stranded second reason is u is very unstable or reactive if it was t it would have been very stable then the third reason is the sugar the ribose sugar has an additional hydroxyl group at the second carbon atom which makes it very reactive clear so these are the basic four difference you have to know about dna and rna which serves as the genetic material now we are going into the details of the structure of dna this is the structure of dna 
first you must remember that I am bringing the four bases and I am starting to construct the DNA from its building block. So slowly we will start with the building block. The building blocks are the nitrogenous bases A, T, G and C. A pairs with T, T pairs with A, G pairs with C or C pairs with G. This is complementary base pairing. See this is a base pair rule and the bond between the bases is weak hydrogen bond. Between A and T it is a double bond and between G and C it is a triple hydrogen bond. So you should remember this. Between A and T it is a double bond and between G and C it is triple bond. A will always pair with T and vice versa and G will always pair with C and vice versa. No inter pairing. Now from the first level I am moving on. So now what I drew is the basis. Now slowly I am going to increase the construction. Here the base is connected to sugar. So I am connecting sugar, sugar, sugar. Now we see this component base plus sugar forms a nucleoside. So I am in introducing the next term nucleoside. So what is a nucleoside? Nucleoside is sugar plus base. So we see this nucleoside which has adenine and sugar, the second nucleotide which has thymine and sugar, third nucleotide which has guanine and sugar, fourth nucleotide which has, sorry nucleoside which has cytosine with sugar, it is nucleoside. Next I am going to add one more component. The phosphate group. Now what I get is a nucleotide, not a side nucleotide. So what is a nucleotide starting from the left? Phosphate plus sugar plus base. So how many nucleotides I have? See, this is the first nucleotide which has adenine as the base, second nucleotide which has thymine as the base, third nucleotide which has guanine as the base and fourth nucleotide which has cytosine as the base. So now what I drew is nucleotide. Now you can see how many nucleotides are there. You can see 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 nucleotides and these 4 nucleotides are connected and they form a polynucleotide. So the fourth concept I am introducing is polynucleotide. So what is polynucleotide? It is a polymer of nucleotides. So in this polymer of nucleotides I have 4 nucleotides to get the repeat, repeated which forms the polynucleotide. So I hope you have understood from simple to complex I started with the basis. The bases are A, T, G, C. A will pair with T by a double bond. G will pair with C with a triple bond. So I told about the basis. The bases are A, T, G, C. Next I told about nucleoside. What is a nucleoside? The base with sugar constitute nucleoside. See, base with sugar constitute nucleoside. So accordingly I made four nucleosides with the four different bases. Then I made it bigger unit which comprises three components. That is the base, sugar and phosphate. Base, sugar and phosphate. Now that way, base, sugar and phosphate, four of them are made. So we have a chain or polymer of nucleotides. This polymer of nucleotide is known as polynucleotide. So I started from the scratch that is the building block. Now the same thing I should draw this side. From the base I should slowly construct the nucleoside and then I will construct the nucleotide. Now what I am constructing is nucleoside that is sugar with the base, sugar with the base. Now I am slowly constructing to the making it the nucleotide with phosphate. Now I got nucleotide this side also. How many nucleotides? 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 nucleotides. 1, 2, 3, 4. So I got a polymer of nucleotides. So a DNA, if you analyze, a DNA has how many nucleotides? 2 polynucleotides. So DNA has, finally I end up therefore, DNA has how many 
polynucleotide chains this is one polynucleotide chain and this is the second polynucleotide chain so it has two polynucleotide chains clear so once again the pink indicates one polynucleotide chain which has uh, it which is a polymer of a number of nucleotide having the base sugar and phosphate units repeated this is one nucleotide it's repeated and the, this side which is indicated in green is the second polynucleotide chain with four nucleotides a polymer of four nucleotides now a very important part look how it is starting and ending look at the start of this chain this chain starts with sugar and ends with sugar look at the other second polynucleotide again it starts with sugar and ends with sugar this is a very wrong representation so the correct representation is if this left hand side chain or the first polynucleotide chain starts with sugar it should end with phosphate and the second polynucleotide chain will start with phosphate and end with sugar now the ending with sugar will be indicated as 3 prime end and the ending with phosphate will be indicated as 5 prime end so here it is 5 prime 3 prime so we can say the two polynucleotide chains how are they running they are not running parallelly see parallel means both the arrow head facing up this is parallel arrangement but here the arrangement is like this this is called anti parallel arrangement so here we can say the two polynucleotide chains are running anti parallelly the meaning of anti parallel is here it can be told in a very brief version one chain one polynucleotide chain runs in the 3 prime 5 prime direction while the second polynucleotide chain runs in the 5 prime 3 prime direction this is the better representation of saying anti parallel so they are not parallel earlier what was depicted is parallel if both ends in sugar and this side also ends in sugar we can say parallel but here the ending be careful adjacent to 3 prime it should be 5 prime on the top and at the bottom adjacent to the 5 prime it should be 3 prime no 3 prime 3 prime together or 5 prime 5 prime together of both the strands okay it should be one strand if it's running in the 3 prime 5 prime direction the other strand should be running in the 5 prime 3 prime direction so that arrangement is known as anti parallel i have indicated in the form of the structure clear